World War II has come and gone, but the history of the conflict that shook the world has long remained a topic of discussion in media houses, college campuses and political think tanks. At the centre of it all was Germany and the defeat Hitler and his troops suffered at the hands of the Soviets and the Allies. One arm of the German military that failed to live up to its prestige was the German army. After close to 80 years since the last shot was fired, many historians blame poor logistical planning for the failures of the army. This position is one many agree with, but why was it so bad? Different causes have been attributed to this. In this video, we will do a quick review as to why the German army logistics was so bad. For all the blame laid at the feet of German generals and the military high command, one structural problem Hitler and his top planners failed to address was the country's limited industrial base. Many argue that the Wehrmacht had not fully mobilized as at the time Hitler started the war. So much so that many divisions in the army still relied on beasts of burden like donkeys, mules and horses to pull equipment from one location to the next. Trucks were not enough for equipment transport and this limited the speed of many divisions. For an army whose stock in trade was to launch blitzkrieg against enemy forces, a lack of sufficient transport vehicles was a big limitation. The Wehrmacht tried to correct this anomaly by building capacity and seizing transport vehicles from France. However, these measures were not enough for an army fighting across the continent and in different fronts against different foes. When the US eventually joined the war, their arrival placed further strain on the logistic resources of the German forces. Long before the first shot was fired, many planners in the army had complained about the structural weaknesses of many divisions. Why the high command did very little to correct these weaknesses remains a mystery, but many argue that the outcome of the First World War was partly to blame. It has long been an accepted dogma in military cycles that no army can launch a successful military campaign without a secure chain of supply. In fact, one popular saying is, amateurs talk strategy, professionals talk logistics. This quote was attributed to an American general named Omar Bradley, but this cannot be proved. However, regardless of the origin of the quote, it remains relevant till this day. For large parts of the war, many German divisions were left isolated without supply lines. This reduced the flexibility and capacity of Hitler's forces to launch counter-offensives against the Allies, and even when they did, the successes recorded were not as significant as they would have been or they were short-lived. Another reason many historians do not talk about as much as they should is the German model of war. Militaries may use similar weapons or dress the same, but they have different approaches to war. To better understand the German model, we need to look further than the unification of Germany by Otto von Bismarck, which happened after the conclusion of the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Despite being a conglomeration of different regions and cities with different traditions, the Prussian way became the new German way. This Prussian mindset became the foundational practice in the German army. Before then, Prussia was a very small principality with a limited scope under the Holy Roman Empire, and before the 15th century, it played no part in major European affairs. However, as it grew in influence and became the main power in the new German state, it assumed full control of all government establishments, including the army. Prussia was very successful against the French because it had a small but elite fighting force which could operate in smaller regions. This was the scope the army was equipped for and it built its capacity along this line. With the coming of Hitler and his desire for Lebensraum, the army was not equipped to wage war across an expanded territory. In the beginning of the war, the tactical brilliance of the Germans shined through. But over time, the logistical weakness of crucial army formations became a limitation. Another major reason for the logistical weaknesses of the army was not even about equipment and machinery. There was also a psychological dimension to it. What do we mean? You see, at the time, many officers in the ranks had a negative sentiment towards the quartermaster division. For this reason, many bright officers did not want to be posted to quartermaster service. As a result, the division was loaded with untalented officers who lacked the logistical competence to plan and secure the supply chains of the German army. With little or no motivation to serve in this role, the consequences were devastating for the army. Now this is where things begin to get really interesting. You see, the perimeter the army had to fight in on the Western Front were much smaller, but as the army diverted its attention to the east, its supply lines became quite strained. The invasion of France, Austria and many other Western countries was short and swift. To be fair, so was the invasion of Poland. However, when Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa to secure the east, problems began to spring up across various war theatres. 
Many historians argue that the Führer's decision to invade Russia was perhaps the greatest tactical mistake by the Germans during the war. While mules were able to transport equipment across shorter distances in the west, this was not going to work in the east with larger swatches of land stretching for miles on end. Furthermore, the weather was another issue they did not plan for. Many divisions who had transport vehicles lacked the winter oil to fire the engines, rendering them virtually useless. Major General Eduard Wagner was the quartermaster general of the army, but he is hardly talked about in war annals. Quartermasters don't command fighting divisions, and the thick of the battle is where many officers wanted to be. However, the position of quartermaster is very crucial to the success of any army, and this is one lesson the Germans did not learn. The general was one of the leading characters of the extermination of thousands of Jews in Europe, but he was also one of the officers appalled by Hitler's and the Nazis' barbarity. There are no historic accounts to prove that Wagner was a ringleader on the killing of Jews beyond the fact that he was head of logistics. It's on record, however, that he was concerned that the Germans were losing the war due to Hitler's incompetence and that of his planners. He warned at several times that the army was ill-equipped to launch Operation Barbarossa, and he, like others who raised such concerns, were shunned. Despite his complaints, his position of influence made him a key figure among historians when discussing the logistic weaknesses of the German army. A special focus has to be given to the planning of Barbarossa when analyzing events. Hitler wanted a swift and decisive victory against the Soviets, but he didn't provide the army with the required support to make this possible. Officers who voiced concerns about the plans were redeployed or criticized. When they landed at Volga, they encountered problems made even worse by the weather. Why Hitler and his generals failed to plan for the legendary harsh winter of the East still beggars belief. Many soldiers lacked winter clothing, fuel, or the right kind of ammunition to prosecute a war under such circumstances. In the end, the outcome was an unmitigated disaster. To make matters worse, the Russians were able to mobilize much faster than the Germans could. Stalin's forces initially faced logistical forces of their own, but when Russian factories got up to speed, they were able to produce and launch transport vehicles faster than the Germans. To crown it all, they received a large volume of food and equipment from the US under the Lend-Lease program. So from 1943 onward, the fortunes of the German army became dimmer right until the collapse of the Eastern Front and the surrender of the Nazis in 1945. With that, we bring this video to an end. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Leaving a like on our video and your comments also go a long way in showing your support. Till then, take care.